The world is one big data problem. As it turns out, this thing holds true both for our brain as well as machine learning. Every single moment, our brain is trying to segregate the incoming information into the useful and not so useful categories. A similar process occurs in the artificial neural network architecture in deep learning. The segregation plays a key role in helping a neural network functioning, ensuring that it learns from useful information rather than getting stuck analyzing the not useful part. And this is where activation functions comes into the picture. In this video, we are going to define what is the neural network activation function and why neural networks need an activation function. And then we are going to look at four different types of activation function that you can choose from. Of course, there are more different types of activation function that you can choose from, but these are the most commonly used one. So without any further delay, let us get started. A neuron in the human brain is similar to a node in the artificial neural network. It receives a set of inputs and depending on the characteristic of these inputs and their intensity, the brain process and analyze them and decide whether the neuron should be activated or not. In an artificial neural network, this is the role of the activation function. Its main purpose is to transform the input from the node into an output value to be fed to the next hidden layer or output and whether the neuron input to the network is important and should be passed on in the process of predicting the output. Also, the activation functions are very important as they help in learning and making sense of non-linear and complicated mapping between inputs and their corresponding output. If we compare the neural network to our brain, a node is a replica of a neuron that receives a set of input signal similar to external stimuli. Depending on the nature and intensity of this input signal, the brain processes them and decides whether the neuron should be activated or not. In this image, we can see a neural network made of interconnected neurons. Each of them is characterized by its weight, bias, and activation function. Here are other elements of this network. We will start with the input layer. The input layer takes raw input from the domain and there is no consumption performed at this layer. Note here just pass on the information to the hidden layer. In the hidden layer, as the name suggests, the nodes of this layer are not exposed. They provide an abstraction to the neural network. The hidden layer performs all kind of consumption on the feature entered through the input layer and transfer the result to the output layer. In the output layer, it is the final layer of the network that binds the information learned through the hidden layer and delivers the final value as a result. It must be pointed out that all hidden layers usually use the same activation functions. However, the output layer will typically use a different activation function from the hidden layer. The choice depends on the goal or the type of prediction made by the model. When learning about neural network, you will come across two essential terms describing the movement of information, feedforward and backpropagation. In the feedforward propagation, the flow of information occurs in the forward direction. The input is used to calculate some intermediate function in the hidden layer, which is then used to calculate an output. In the feedforward propagation, the activation function is a mathematical gate in between the input feeding the current neuron and its output going to the next layer. In backpropagation, the weights of the network connection are repeatedly adjusted to minimize the difference between the actual output vector of the network and the desired output vector. To put it simply, packet propagation aims to minimize the cost function by adjusting the network's weight and biases. The cost function gradient determines the level of adjustment with respect to parameters like activation function, weight, bias, etc. In an artificial neural network, 
We calculate the sum of the products of the inputs and their corresponding weight, and finally apply an activation function to it to get the output of that particular layer and supply it as the input to the next layer. The primary role of the activation function is to transform the summed weighted input from the node into an output value to be fed to the next hidden layer or output. Why do neural networks need an activation function? So we know now what activation function is and what it does. Why do neural networks need it? Well, the purpose of an activation function is to add a nonlinear behavior to the neural network. Activation functions introduce an additional step at each layer during the forward propagation, but its computation is worth it, and here is why. Let us suppose we have a neural network working without the activation functions. In that case, every neuron will only be performing a linear transformation on the inputs using the weights. It doesn't matter how many hidden layers we attach in the neural network. All layers will behave in the same way because the consumption of the two linear function is a linear function itself. Although the neural network becomes simpler, learning any complex task is impossible and our model would be just a linear regression model. A neural network prediction accuracy is defined by the type of activation function used. The most commonly used activation functions are nonlinear activation functions. They are preferred over linear activation functions in a neural network because the error possess nonlinear characteristics, which in turn with the ability of the neural network to learn about invalid data. We are going to look at four different types of activation functions that are the most commonly used. The threshold function depends on threshold value that indicate if a neuron should be activated or not. This means if the input to the activation function is greater than the threshold value, then the neuron gets activated, or else it gets deactivated, and in that case the output is not fed as input to the next layer. The threshold function is the simplest activation function that exists, and it can be implemented with a simple if-else statement in Python. On the x-axis, we have the weighted sum of the inputs, and on the y-axis, we have the values from 0 to 1. Basically, the threshold function is very basic function. So, if the value is less than 0, then the threshold function passes on 0. If the value is greater than or equal to 0, then the threshold function passes on 1. In simple terms, it is like a yes-no type of function. Here are some of the limitations of the threshold function. First, it cannot provide multi-value outputs. For example, it cannot be used for multi-class classification problem. Second, the gradient of the step function is zero, which causes an obstruction in the backpropagation process. The sigmoid activation function is the most widely used activation function, as it is a nonlinear function. It transforms the values in the range 0 to 1. It takes any real value as input, and then the output will be in the range 0 to 1. In this function, the x is the sum of all the values. It is a function that is used in logistic regression, and what is good about this function is that it provides a smooth gradient which prevent jumps in the output value. Unlike the threshold function, it is a gradual progression, which means anything below zero just drops off, and above zero it approximates to one. The sigmoid function is very useful in the output layer, especially when we are trying to predict probability. Here's why sigmoid activation function is one of the most widely used function. First, it is commonly used for models where we have to predict the probability as an output, since probability of anything exists only between the range of 0 and 1. Sigmoid is the right choice because of its range. Second, the function is differentiable and provides a smooth gradient, which means prevent jump in the output value. This is represented by an S-shape of the sigmoid 
activation function. The activation function is one of the most popular functions for artificial neural networks. It goes to zero below zero and from there it gradually progresses as the input value increases as well. The advantage of using the activifier function is that not all neurons are activated at the same time and this means that the activifier function is far more computationally efficient when compared to the sigmoid and hyperbolic tangent functions. This implies that a neuron will be deactivated only when the output is linear transformation. Also, the activifier function accelerates the convergence of a gradient descent towards the global minimum of the loss function due to its linear non-saturating property. The hyperbolic tangent function is very similar to the sigmoid function, but the hyperbolic tangent function goes below zero. So, the values goes from zero to approximate one and from the other side goes from zero to approximate minus one. In hyperbolic tangent function, the larger the input value, the closer the output will be to one and the smaller the input, the closer the output will be to minus one. This result in different sign of output from previous layer, which will be fed as input to the next layer. The advantages of using the hyperbolic tangent function are, first, the output of the hyperbolic tangent function is zero center. Hence, we can easily map the outputs as strongly negative, neutral, or strongly positive. Second, the hyperbolic tangent function is usually used in hidden layers of a neural network as its value lies between minus one to one. Therefore, the mean for the hidden layer comes out to be zero or very close to it. It helps in centering the data and make learning for the next layer much easier. By this, we reach to the end of this video. These are the most commonly used types of activation function. Of course, there are other types of activation functions. If you have any question or if you want additional information, please leave a comment below this video and I will get back to you. I hope that you find this information helpful and if so, please don't forget to like, comment and share the video. Thank you.